Hi, you have reached the podcast of Professor Haim Shor. In this episode, Hagag, Haman the Agagite, Gog, Magog, Gag, what binds them all together? Agag, Haman the Agagite, Gog, Magog, Gag, what binds them together? Gag in Hebrew is roof. For example, I lie awake, I have become like a bird on the roof, gag. Psalm 102 verse 8 A gag was king of Amalek. Amalek, throughout the Bible, serves as epitome for the disconnect between the heaven and the earth, Genesis 1 verse 1. Therefore, the Israelites, on their way to the promised land, are explicitly commanded, in no ambiguous terms, remember what Amalek had done to you on the way, when you came out of Egypt, you shall blot out the memory of Amalek from under the sky. Thou shall not forget. Deuteronomy 25 verses 17 and 19 The Bible tells us about King Saul, and what he did to Agag, king of Amalek. He took Agag, king of Amalek, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the sword. 1 Samuel 15 8 Haman, a central figure in the book of Esther, was the first historic figure to conceive and then attempt to implement a final solution on the Jewish people during the reign of the Persian Empire, as expounded in detail in the book of Esther. Haman was a descendant of Agag, namely, of Amalek's seed. Esther again pleaded with the king, falling at his feet and weeping. She begged him to put an end to the evil plan of Haman the Agagite, which he devised against the Jews. Esther 8 verse 3 Gog and Magog are well-known names, central to Ezekiel's prophecy of end-time final war. Son of man, set your face against Gog, of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him. Ezekiel 38 verse 2 What binds together all these names? Answer, the double appearance of a single letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the third letter, Gimel, corresponding to the English G. In Biblical Hebrew, as well as in Modern Hebrew, a double appearance of the letter Gimel forms the Hebrew word Gag, written with two Gimels. This combination has a single meaning. Roof The roof is that part of a house, which protects its residents from harm that may befall them from the sky. In Biblical terms, the roof attains a much wider meaning, indeed a gigantic symbolic significance. As a roof of a house disconnects earth from sky, the biblical roof symbolizes disconnect between the heaven and the earth, as these are alluded to in the first verse of Genesis. In the beginning Elohim created the heaven and the earth, Genesis 1 verse 1. The most concrete biblical allusion to this interpretation is given by the command, given to the Israelites, to build booths, Sukkot, during the Feast of Tabernacles. You shall dwell in booths for seven days, all native-born Israelites are to live in booths so that your descendants will know that I made the Israelites live in booths when I brought them out of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Leviticus 23 verse 42 There is no solid protective roof for the booths where the Feast of Tabernacles is celebrated. Traditionally, the roof must be made from natural elements that have grown from the ground. Most people use either palm fronds or bamboo with wooden beams as support. The roof also must be thick enough to provide significant shade. But, the roof of the sukkah must be also thin enough to let the stars shine through. 
Why does the sukkah not have a solid roof? What does this signify? The answer is simple. Lack of solid roof signifies complete faith in divine providence, in divine protection against harm that may befall us. Conversely, relying on the symbolic physical roof as protection, perhaps as soul protection, signifies a deep faith that the earth, Genesis 1 verse 1, is all that there is. There is no heaven. There is no God. The roof of a house generates a disconnect from the sky. Symbolically, sitting in the booth during the Feast of Tabernacles, while removing the roof, signifies faith in divine protection that would protect against any harm, from the sky or otherwise. And more generally, complete faith in the connection between the heaven and the earth. Amalek embodies the opposite. There is no heaven, no system of divine justice, no God. There is only the earth, the observable physical reality, ruled by law of nature. Everything else, which looks random, is indeed random. There is no divine providence. Agag, Haman the Agagite, Gog, Magog, they all represent the Amalekite philosophy of life, no God, no heaven, all is coincidental. The biblical concept of roof symbolizes exclusive reliance on our own ability and capability to understand nature, rule nature, and then construct the needed roof that would protect us. There is no heavenly protection. Roof, consistently throughout the Bible, is an integral part of names of historic figures, past, Hagag, or future, Gog, and of names of lands, like the mysterious Magog, which represent a philosophy diagonally opposite to that of the Bible, a philosophy central to current Western civilization, the Amalekite philosophy of life. Surprisingly and unexpectedly, all these names include the Hebrew gag, Ruf. And how will the future Gog and Magog war end? A quote from Prophet Zechariah. And it shall come to pass, that everyone that is left of all the nations, which had come against Jerusalem, shall go up, every single year, to bow before the King, the Lord of hosts, and to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. Zechariah 14 verse 16 Personal Confession Amazing Thank you for listening. Until the next episode, goodbye.